Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So our topic is, uh, our main topic is uh, applying mindfulness in meditation and in life. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the word of uh, word uh, mindfulness. Uh, very recently, I was uh, asked. Uh, about this word and somebody came to me and he told me Bhante, you know, uh, mindfulness means it's kind of a very strange word because uh, mind, it sounds like mind is full. <laughs> mind is full of something. So it's kind of weird <laughs> and uh, you know, can we use the awareness or just, uh, you, know, you know, instead of mindfulness? So what it, could, it, what it uh, occurred to me at that time, thinking the mind is full of the moment without having anything in our mind. So it is completely, you know, full of the moment, uh, full of the present moment that we experience right now. But I really like to use uh, true awareness because our mindfulness, uh, uh, we can use it, if you, we can use that also, it's not a problem, but um, the problem is with the meaning, uh, how people understand it and, why, and how do they define it. So, but uh, for, for me, most important thing is the action which is in that word. So can we, you know, make an action according to that word, following that word? So not, uh, you know, we don't have any problem with the word, problem is with the action. So can we be mindful or can we be aware of the moment? So mindfulness, it just, uh, it means, literally means that uh, we are mindful of, you know, of what we are doing. Our mind is uh, filled with that action of that moment and we know what we are doing. So, but in the terms of the Buddhist teaching, uh, the sati, that's the Pali word that we use uh, as mindfulness or as awareness. But uh, when we use, you know, when we, when we look at the uh, meaning of sati, it means uh, you're able to remember or memorize everything that you did, that you said. That's the little meaning of sati. You can remember everything you did and you said. So, but you, we can't remember everything that we did and that we said. You know, uh, we cannot remember everything. It is because we uh, we didn't have that ability. We didn't apply uh, sati into that action. We were not aware of the of all the actions that we did. So we are not uh, able to remember what exactly we did or what we said. So if you go back to few days. Uh, you know, ago, if you go back to the past, just go back to a few days ago, you know, a few days before, and then uh, try to remember everything that you did, everything that you said. You won't be able to remember everything that you said and did, right? So, but um, if you train your mindfulness, if you train your mind, applying sati, uh, applying true awareness into the moment, you are able to remember everything that you did and that you said. That's the good thing of the mindfulness, of uh, true awareness. <coughs> so, let's, uh, let's um, talk about uh, the true awareness and mindfulness or, what, mindfulness or whatever the word, and how we can apply it into our life. 
and into a meditation and what is the nature of sati what is the nature of that true awareness uh, true awareness the reason that i did that i like to use that word is because is because uh, when we say true awareness uh, it means you are aware of the true nature of the moment you are not just aware of the moment right you are aware of the true nature of the moment the reality of the moment but we can be aware of the of the th- of things that we do but we might not be aware of the me of the nature of the moment so that is what we need we need to be aware of the nature the reality of the moment the moment means the action that you have that you take right now right in this moment a moment mean an action every time what you do is you think you you talk and you you know work physically you can you may you may be walking or standing or sitting or sleeping whatever right if you look at you know each moment you will see an intention an action there every time you know you you might be thinking of something so you need to have the true awareness of what you are thinking of so you may know what you are thinking of you may know that i'm thinking of Uh, my house i'm thinking of my car i'm thinking of uh, someone or something uh, or i'm thinking of uh, you know of an incident that happened yesterday you may you may be aware of it you might uh, be aware of it but you might not be aware of the nature of what you are <coughs> thinking of that's what we really need why do we need that true awareness of the moment because when we know when we are able to have the true awareness of the moment we are able to make right action in the moment we are able to uh, have right intention hold some intention and hold some action which do not create troubles we do not create stress or fear or anxiety it helps you to release yourself from fear from stress from depression from anxiety but if you do not have the true awareness of the moment we are not able to uh, let go of uh, the cause of stress or depression and everything that we just mentioned but when we are aware of the true nature of the moment to nature of what we are thinking what we are doing what we are talking about then we if we have a strong energy which can <coughs> burn that uh, cause of stress or cause of suffering you are able to let go of it um i usually talk about where you know through you know very important three factors uh with true awareness <clears throat> the other two factors are you know patient and the ability to let go and you need true awareness so those three factors are very very important to keep ourselves at calm and at peace and you know to <coughs> go forward on the way on the path of liberation patient and true awareness and letting go the ability of letting go we need to have you know such a strong energy which help us to let go of it which help us to cut that fetter off 
So we need to have true awareness to see that fetter, uh, to see the cause of suffering, to let go of it. So when we have true awareness of the moment, we see the direction. We see where we are going to, or what, what is going to happen if I do this. So that gives us the wisdom. We're using that wisdom, where we can let go of dangerous stuff, of unwholesome thoughts, unwholesome actions. We need wisdom to do this. We need true awareness to do this. We need patience to do this. We need energy, effort to do this. So, <clears throat> uh, true awareness, or sati, mindfulness, uh, when we uh, talk about mindfulness of sati, we want to understand the nature of sati, the nature of mindfulness, or nature of true awareness, what it does. You know, what it does for me. What is the nature of true awareness? The nature of true awareness is it, it always shows you what is good, what is wrong. Simply, I mean, if, I, if we uh, define it in a simple way, that's a simple idea of true awareness. It always shows you what is good, what is right. What is the good intention, what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, I'm sorry. What is good and what is bad, what is right, what is wrong. So it shows you that those both sides of, of your actions, of your thoughts, of your words, of your actions that you make. So that is very important. Because when we know the good side, you know, the good thing, it brings good stuff into us. When we know, you know, the wrong side, the wrong intention, the unwholesome intentions, we are able to keep ourselves away from that by letting go of that unwholesome intention or unwholesome thought. So awareness, true awareness shows you what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, what is skillful, what is unskillful. So when you have such an ability, you are able to focus your mind on wholesome objects, if you have confidence in it and if you have wisdom about it. So when you know this is an unwholesome object, then you let go of it. What help you to be aware of it? The awareness that you develop, that you train, that you practice. So it ne we need to tra train our mind to have such, a, such awareness which can show us what is wrong, what is right, what is good, what is bad, what is wholesome, what is unwholesome. What is Dhamma and what is Adhamma? What is Dhamma means the path of liberation, Adhamma means the path of suffering, the way of suffering. So awareness, true awareness shows us this is the way of suffering, this is the way of happiness. And it shows you this is the cause of suffering, this is the liberation of suffer from suffering. And it shows you this is the path of freedom. It shows you what is suffering, what is happiness. Once we develop 
this true awareness to up to that maximum level where we can really recognize what is suffering what is true happiness and what is peace that is where you let go of cause of suffering yeah unless we see that we won't do it we won't let go of it if we do not see the cause of suffering if we do not see suffering as suffering because we keep uh, looking for things which cause suffering because of the ignorance we do not know that this is suffering we do not know what is true happiness we don't understand it we are deluded by the moment by the feeling by experiences that we have in this moment so we need we we are try we try to look we, we try to um find more more of those more of those experience so we work so hard to gain that happiness but you know we end up with being stressed out we don't get that happiness we do not enjoy our life we die you know eventually we die without being satisfied but we need to have a life that is well satisfied and that is well developed and uh, with that kind of life you know if you are going to die we will die you know peacefully we are going to die one day we know that that's why we need to practice mindfulness that's why we need to develop awareness you know we need to have a peaceful life i always emphasize this um thing or which you know this this uh, uh, point which is the uh, happy you know peaceful mind always we need to have a target to have a peaceful mind not anything else when we have that target we will be able to let go of anything that do not create that do not Uh, sustain to have that peaceful mind we can let go of them because we know this creates suffering this creates stress in me so we let go of it and we have a peaceful mind to do it to do to do that we need the true awareness of the moment of our actions of our thoughts when we understand that very clearly life will be so easy it it will be hard to practice in the beginning but when we practice it more we are able to have it more we need to be surrounded by noble friends and we need to listen to dhamma and we need to think wisely and practice it in order to raise such an awareness so remember we are raising an awareness of the true nature of the moment that's what we do in mindfulness practice that's what we do in meditation it has a long way to go but we need to begin and continue and we need to experience the results of mindfulness of true awareness of this practicing because it it gives us a big um you know push to go forward when we see how beneficial mindfulness or awareness is let me uh, give you an example about the about the value of true nature true awareness think about your life you have to deal with various kind of people you know you have to uh you have a family you have friends you have a job you have neighbors right 
you have you people you meet on the road right? you have you know you have to deal with the society so when you uh, deal with them when you uh, spend your time with your family members your friends and you with your co-workers and others if you if we don't have the true awareness of what you are doing of what you are saying you get more trouble you get trouble because you know your actions can hurt someone else and also you can get easily uh, frustrated by things and then you you know uh, get you know easily stressed out and frustrated and you know you, know, you may have resentful thoughts so many things <coughs> that you have to go through so in your life think about a moment think about someone uh, doing something bad to you or saying something bad to you if you just let anger to deal with that moment then you make wrong actions you don't have true awareness of the moment that's why anger is there if you have the true awareness of the moment you won't get angry you won't get frustrated nobody will nobody could you know make you angry or frustrated if you have the true awareness of the moment and nobody will be able to make you suffer if we have the true awareness of the moment because true awareness helps us to have the right intention and let go of the pressure that we have when we have true awareness applying into the moment our mind is very wide but when true awareness is not present in our mind our mind is very narrow when our mind is very narrow there there can be a big pressure big tension because it's very narrow but with when it is very wide there's no pressure it's calm it's peaceful you can think better you can react to things very well and nicely that's your daily life in normal life it requires practicing to bring yourself to that level not to react to things with anger with jealous with greed with frustration with resentment with ill will react to things with kindness compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity and generosity and develop a moral life so mindfulness true awareness always shows you what is right what is wrong that is what we need if you if when we have problems then it shows you this is wrong this is this causes suffering then what we need to do if we have that awareness what we have to do is we need to let go of that we should not do it we should not think of it anymore then we give it up we do not engage in any actions 
that create fear, anxiety and suffering. And we are able to let go of that thought, that unwholesome thought. Because we have that energy that came from, that comes from the wisdom that we gain from the moment. When we have the awareness, we are able to gain the wisdom. And then our wisdom grows. When our wisdom grows, our awareness also grows. When it grows, our wisdom grows further. And same time our awareness also grows. It keeps growing. Both of them grows very well. They hand in hand each other. They grow together. So the ability to understand what is wrong and what is right is also part of wisdom. What is wholesome, what is unwholesome, it is the right view, it is the wisdom. It is the wisdom. But what mindfulness does is, what is what true awareness does is, it shows you this is unwholesome, this is wholesome. This is a friend, this is an enemy. Because, you know, in our life, we uh, sometimes we come across with, uh, with hard times and then we get frustrated and stressed out and we are sad and we suffer. But the, most of the time we think that problem came from outside. Someone else did this. But in reality, the cause of that trouble, cause of that, you know, cause of your uh, suffering, uncomfortable feeling, the cause is inside of you, not outside. When we see the, uh, the cause of suffering inside of us, then we will let go of it. If we do not see the problem inside of us, we will not work, we will not work on it. We will not work on letting go of the cause of problem, cause of suffering. So true awareness shows you the problem is inside of you and this is the cause of it. This is what troubles you. So what troubles us mostly? Anger, greed, jealousy, ego, hatred, ill will, passion, desires, attachment, there are lots of things, defilements, we call them defilements. Hindrances, they defile our mind. Hindrances, things which hinder our mental development, such as, and, you know, uh, too much attachment to the, to uh, sense pleasures, to see things, to hear things, to taste things, to touch things, and uh, thoughts of anger and laziness and drowsiness that's the third hindrance fourth hindrance is restlessness and remorse fifth one is doubt <coughs> those are called five hindrances the buddha said those are the piles of unwholesome thoughts unwholesome things they create unwholesome thoughts one after the other one after the other when we feed them, they grow. When they grow, we don't have true awareness applying into our, into our actions, into ourselves. We can't, you know, be aware of the true nature of the moment and stay with peace and let go of course of peace. We can't do it when hindrances grow. We need to know about them. We need to understand that because that helps us a lot to raise the awareness of the true nature, of the true of the nature, true nature of the moment. 
then it's easy for us to make the right decision, make the right intention. So now, <coughs> when we live in our day-to-day -day life, when we meet other people, when we have to deal with other people, we need to have an awareness which shows us these two different things. What are the two different things? Wholesome things and unwholesome things. When you have an intention in your mind to talk about something, you need to know what you are talking about and what is the nature of what you are talking about. Will that create troubles? If you spell it out, will it create troubles? Will it hurt somebody? Will it hurt me? How, would, how will be the result of that action? We need to know about them. We need to be aware of them. When we have wisdom and the true awareness, it shows you right away, this is dangerous. It doesn't take time once you, when you develop it. It shows you right away. When it arises, when it arises in you, it shows you right away, this is an unwholesome thing. You, then you will stay at peace and calm because you do not tend to do it. You do not you're not going to spell that out and you're not going to speak or talk to somebody with anger, with greed, or with defiled mind, with good <coughs> mind. You, you can be, uh, you are able to stay silent <coughs> and react to things in the right way. Then you don't get trouble. But sometimes I have experienced that when we are out of mindfulness and we begin to kind of uh, react to things very aggressively or kind of, you know, in an agitated way, and we get troubles. It becomes worse than it was. But if we react to things with a peaceful mind, and if you know what to do at the moment, then it doesn't create much trouble. It ceases that trouble. Sometimes we have to be silent, but we don't know that we need to be silent in the moment. That's how I can react to the other person, other people. But we don't know that I should be re silent right this moment, in this moment. So we try to react to it, we try to verify ourselves. No, I am right, I didn't do anything wrong, don't misunderstand me. <laughs> and we are trying to verify, we, we are trying to verify ourselves that I am right, but they don't get it. But being silent and let go you know, let go of, uh, you know, fame or praise or whatever you need at in that moment. And if you can stay in silence, then you will have freedom. You will feel, you will experience, uh, you know, <coughs> freedom and like, peace. Because you do not feed that uh, moment, or you do not feed anger. You know, sometimes we think, we think uh, that, um, we think that in a way like, do, uh, I, you know, we don't like to be uh, misunderstood by other people. Some people misunderstand us, or sometimes we like to be praised by others, and I need to be praised by them. Or we have an idea that we have a desire that not to be blamed. We don't like to be blamed or be ac being accused by others. We don't like, right? 
So we don't like to, you know, be blamed, be accused, or we don't, we like to um, um, be praised by others. But I see troubles at both ends. Do you see troubles at both ends? The two different thing, right? I like to be praised by others and I don't like to be accused by others. So when we have true awareness in the moment, when we apply that into the moment, we see troubles at both ends. Because when we have a desire to be praised and we have any like to be praised by others and we need it, we like it, we are looking for it. So sometimes we treat our guest, our neighbors very well. So they might not get satisfied very easily with what we did for them. It might be very hard to satisfy everybody and get praised. So, but we know we want to <coughs> be praised by others, so we treat them very well and we expect that praise, we expect their appreciation, but we don't get it. Then how would you feel? How would you feel when you are in such a situation? Sad. Yeah, we are sad. So then, what causes that sadness? Did they cause it? No, they didn't. What created that sadness was it's no mind. That's our expectation, our desire. If I can stay, keep me, keep myself away from that kind of expectations, I am free from that end. And also at the same time, when we see, when we have a desire, when we have a desire to be, to a kind of, you know, when we, you know, dislike to be accused or be uh, blamed by others or someone else. Then someone else blames us, accuses us and we suffer from it. We get angry because we didn't expect that. So therefore what we should do is we need to have an awareness that helps us to let go both side the expectation and that dislike disliking you know uh, get accused or get blamed when we when we expect to be praised to be appreciated by others at the same time we have the opposite side of it, we don't like to be blamed or deep, you know, uh, depressed, All right? Praised or dispraised uh, or blamed, or accused, <coughs> criticized. Criticized. Yeah. So, but when we re release ourselves from both, we can see wonderful bliss of happiness liberation. It's very sweet and very advanced too. But in our daily life we're always looking for something. We're always looking for someone else's help, appreciation or love. But we won't get it. We're always looking for something from outside, a pleasure from outside, but we won't get it. And then we get it stressed out, we suffer, we have anxiety. But when we have true awareness 
in the moment, then we are able to satisfy with what we have. Wherever we are, we are able to enjoy the peace of liberation, the peace of the moment, the bliss of that moment, because that awareness shows you that this idea is an unwholesome. This thought or this idea is wholesome. That, that's what mindfulness does for us. So we need it. And when you have to deal with other people, you need that. It's, it's really hard because it's so hard to let go of um, you know, the desire we get ourselves depressed by others or uh, get praised by others. You know, we like to, we have a desire to get praised by others or we have um, a desire to not get, not to get uh, accused or blamed or criticized by others. When we let go of both, we are free from suffering and stress. That's just an example. It's just an example. Because very recently I, ha I happened to, uh, you know, associate with some more guest monks and people and I was, you know, kind of tied up with things and works and, you know, they, you know helping them and I have to um, do, uh, I have to help them because they were guest people. So that's, you know, that's what um, <coughs> I understood when I associate with them and when I deal with them, when I deal with them, how to manage my mind, how to balance my mind without having trouble. When I uh, treat them, I might not be able to satisfy everybody. So, but I try to help them as, as my best. But sometimes, you know, it's so hard to satisfy everybody, people. <laughs> right? It's so hard. So I'm not trying to satisfy everybody. I can't, right? If I can't. Why I can't satisfy everybody? Because I can't change the way they think. But when I have awareness in myself, I can change the way I think. That is how I keep myself at peace and calm. Because it helps me a lot to change the way I think. To let go of course of stress and depression and deal with the moment and make the right intention. I was so happy about this Dhamma, about the, you know, this path. And how much this Dhamma helped me to experience that wonderful bliss of freedom, liberation. By you know, having such an awareness of, of the moment. Because I know that I can change the way other people think. And I do not judge other people. What I want to do is, I want to change the way I think. I want to change the way I act. When I change it, according to the Dhamma, according to the reality, then we stay at full calm and peace and liberation. That's the secret of this awareness. That's the bliss of this true awareness. Because the true awareness teaches, helps us to see what is wholesome, what is unwholesome. If I do this, 
this will help both of us, me and others. If I do this, this will hurt everybody. So then we don't do it. We do not t t say it or tell it to talk about it. We do not think of anything which creates fear, which creates anger, which creates greed, jealousy. Because we know this is dangerous. We have such an awareness which helps us to be aware of the reality of the movement, of the action. Now, what is the reality of that action? If I react to this thing, this person, with anger, then how would be the real, you know, res how would result will be? Result, how would result be? Right? And then we are wise and we are, we are calm and we are peaceful. We do not let anger to control ourselves. Because we know that anger is an unwholesome thought. It's a, it is an unwholesome thing. So we do not act with anger. We act with kindness and compassion, sympathetic joy and generosity and equanimity. We apply the Dhamma, the good stuff into ourselves. It's like, you know, driving your car on the road. When you drive, your car on the road. You're not driving your car around bushes and onto, you're not driving your car into the ocean or into the water or into the bushes because you know you know you get trouble and it's, you, die, you will die. When you drive your car, where do you drive? On the road. On the road, right? So likewise, you, you, know, you need to know what is the road. <laughs> if you don't know the road and the direction of the road, then you get trouble because you don't, you don't know. There are some roads, it's, it's, it's just dead end. There's no, nothing after anymore. So you need to know what is, you need to know what is your destination. And what we need, what is my target, what I need. That's why I gave you the target. To have a target, to have a peaceful mind all the time. Not anything else. Not get this done, not get that done. What I need is to have a peaceful mind at all the time. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I need to have a peaceful mind then it, it will help you to make your life so easier, so easy. Because you have to let go of anything which creates trouble. It helps you to keep yourself at peace and calm. Because you begin to be aware of all the cause of troubles and you begin to be aware of unwholesome thoughts, unwholesome things, you are aware, you are always aware of the road, the way. So mindfulness, true awareness shows you this is Dhamma, this is the road. Always it shows you this is the destination, this is the path of freedom. So if it, when we talk about Applying my mindfulness, applying this true awareness in meditation, then this is what <coughs> we want to know. When you meditate, you use a, a wholesome object as a point, as an object to g get your mind concentrated on. So when you have a mindful object, an object uh, to get your mind concentrated, then you know this is what you want to do, this is what you should be aware of. So when you become aware of the uh, meditation object, 
when you are aware of that you are doing this and then when distracting thoughts arise in you you know that these are distracting thoughts because you have that awareness so you are able to let them go you let all the distracting thoughts go and you keep focusing your mind on the meditation object if you practice breathing meditation you you focus your mind on your breath so breath is a training it is a tool it is the path that you that you need to drive your attention so always you know when we become mindful of the moment then we can see where our attention is focused on and what is the nature of that object and when you see this is not what i'm doing and then you bring that attention back to your meditation object back to the right object back to the path and you keep practicing training and it will go it will go away from the meditation object again and then you recognize it you are aware of it you bring it back and again it will go what you want to do then bring it back again it will go bring it back that's how you train yourself in meditation so what help you to bring your mind back the awareness mindfulness but it is just a beginning remember it is just a beginning of mindfulness the, you know there are more things to do once you get well good concentrated mind because we this is a practicing you know training to release ourselves from all the suffering and stress and depression and understand you know real happiness true happiness and true liberation and we try to liberate ourselves from suffering that's what we do in mindfulness practice so <coughs> when uh, when you meditate remember remember what you're doing and then it will be easy it will be so easy for you to bring your mind back to what you're doing and each time you do it each time you train yourself to train your attention to bring back you will find that when you keep doing it you will find that your attention begins to stay focused on the mindfulness object and always the whole from object comes first when you keep practicing it that is called samadhi what samadhi does is it always brings that whole from object to the uh, to the present then your attention is there that is samadhi mindfulness shows you this is samadhi this is concentration and it shows you when you are distracted it shows you this is distraction this is a distraction this is an unwholesome thought it shows you and then you can uh, you you let go of that unwholesome thought and you bring it back to your meditation object so then your samadhi is growing your concentration stillness of the mind is growing because we are able to keep our attention focused on one object for a while we train our mind 
even right now if your attention is distracted by something else you won't be able to listen to me you won't be able to understand what i'm talking about because you don't know what i'm talking about you cannot be aware of it because your attention is somewhere else your body is here but your mind is somewhere else right so you don't listen you don't hear me very well you will you can hear me very well when you pay attention to me to what i'm talking about and when you keep paying attention to that keep you know, when you pay attention to the meaning of what i'm talking about you can get you can understand what we are talking about so it is same thing in meditation you always train your attention to be focused on a wholesome object so mindfulness shows you what is wholesome what is unwholesome so that is how i we you know we need mindfulness we need to apply mindfulness to awareness into our day to day life day to day act day to day activities because we can do other things very well and you know in a very successful way because it shows you what you want to do what is right what is what you want to do it may it, it helps you to manage everything in a nice way and it helps you to keep your yourself at calm and at peace so that's what we need so that is what uh, you know all about the true awareness and mindfulness that the nature of mindfulness that the nature of uh, true awareness and also samadhi and i will be talking about uh, samadhi and mindfulness the true awareness more, you know um, uh, in detail you know more in my next uh, dhamma discussion in our next dhamma talk so for now i'm going to stop and uh, and i hope you understood what i'm talking about what i'm trying to what i try to emphasize and um, i want you i want you to think about uh, what we talked and the nature of mindfulness and the benefits of mindfulness benefits of true awareness and what kind of awareness do we really need not just an awareness of the moment we need a true awareness of the moment so i will talk about the difference in between the just normal awareness and the true awareness of the moment in our next talk so may you be able to understand it and practice it even right now may you be able to uh, have a free life and happiness achieve and attain nibbana cessation of suffering and be happy sadhu sadhu